Hello, everybody. Happy Ash Wednesday. We are actually recording this on Fat Tuesday, but um, this will be aired on Ash Wednesday. I timed that on purpose. And um, of course, normally on Wednesdays, we have our Magdalene drop. We're doing uh, the woman with the alabaster jaw right now. That is going to, the next installment is going to be postponed until next week because of Ash Wednesday. And we are going to be talking a little bit about Magdalene too. I am joined, before we get into the subject at hand, I'm joined here with my friends, Angie and Nicole, who both have a channel. So before we get into it, let me just go ahead and show their channels to make sure you guys are subscribed. Subscribe. So Angie is the fickle pickle. She's got her fickle pickle business and she's got all of her. I love it. I'm with, I said before we started recording, I'm with two Southern women today. So I am so excited. Um, so this is Angie's uh, channel. Go ahead and please subscribe to Angie. She's hysterical. Yeah, I know you guys love Angie and she's just gotten back from her Mardi Gras celebration. <laughs> so, um, And then we've got Nicole LeBlanc here with her channel as well. Please go ahead and subscribe to Nicole. She's got some great information as we go forth into this um even further into this great awakening which we know is purely spiritual it's information war but really at the end of the day that information comes down to spiritual choices that we as individuals have to make and um you know what we're going to talk about today a lot of ways i feel like as shanti on aquarius rising says it's the drama of it all but it's really, it's important, but it's also really not important at the same time, because we're going to be talking about this. Intention is always everything. And I know we were chatting before we, I, we hit record, um, all of these holidays that we, we speak about, we don't want you guys to give up these holidays. If you enjoy these holidays, I know um, Nicole is from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana area. So this is Mardi Gras was a big deal to you, wasn't it growing up? Yeah, I mean... You know, it's part of life, and uh, as we speak, everyone is off of school because everyone gets Fat Tuesday and Ash Wednesday. They usually get the the week. It depends on where it falls. They usually get three days to celebrate Mardi Gras because it's such a part of the culture. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's really a, a Catholic-rich environment, and so um, you have to kind of look hard hard to find someone who's not Catholic, but even if they're not, you know, they get the holiday too and they get the, the Mardi Gras spirit. It's, uh, it's contagious. And that's what we said, Angie and I said our, on our last episode, um, and I'll, I'll put that down in the description box below, guys, and I will also once again put the deep dives I did a couple of years ago into like Dionysus and that kind of stuff as well. Um, but Angie and I were talking about that last week because Angie and I are on the what we'll say the thir original 13 colony side, if that's even true, but just for the sake of most people, we, we are from Georgia. I, well, I'm originally from South Carolina. And um, we were talking about that last week. Historically, what they tell us, mm -hmm. whether it's true or not, is that um, New Orleans, so the three sisters of the South, again, are Charleston, Savannah, and New Orleans. My, my mom's family is from Charleston. That's where I spent most of my childhood uh, as, as a kid going to the low country where there's also hoodoo and voodoo and all that stuff as well that we yeah. just a little more quiet in South Carolina than they do in New Orleans. Um, but Charleston is the beautiful sister. Savannah is considered the dirty or ugly sister. I, I think I love Savannah. Listen, I love being a good trip yeah. to Savannah. Savannah's fun. Um, and New Orleans is the wicked sister because we know there's so much um, magic in Savannah or in uh, New Orleans. And, and and that's what I love. It's I, I don't see New Orleans as being wicked. I see it as being a, I, I actually believe that New Orleans is Alexandria. But with that mm -hmm. being said, the history we've been given, so people kind of understand what Nicole is saying about it being richly Catholic where Angie and I grew up, it's richly Protestant. Yeah. And that's a big deal here. And, and I know that sounds silly in the world that we're walking into because most people don't give a shit anymore. You know, honestly, even in the secular world, most people don't care. But historically speaking, culturally speaking, um, the the kind of the grudge against the Catholics and the Protestants has been a, been a big thing down here in the South. I know uh, New Orleans, they tell us, they tell us that it's originally was a French um, territory, then it went Spanish, then it went back to the French before it was sold to the United States. Well, I know for myself, um, there's a French quarter in Charleston as well. Um, yeah. And that those were the Huguenots, though. Those, so those were, what's a Huguenot? It's a French uh, Protestant. So my, just a little back, my name, Bryce, my first name is actually my mother's maiden name, which is a big thing to do in the South, but it's spelled with an I. So it's actually Brees, 
Now we live in an English speaking country. So for many generations, it's been, it's, it was turned to Bryce, but the Brises were French Huguenots. So I have a lot of French in my heritage as well, coming from the Protestant side. So that's why they ended up in, um, as they tell us in the history books, if it's even accurate or not, that's why they ended up on the Atlantic side and not in the Gulf of Mexico, which is where New Orleans is located. And Angie, you're pretty much the Protestant side, even though you celebrate mm -hmm. Mardi Gras with your friends, you didn't grow up with it, did you? No. And yesterday, whenever I was up in North Georgia celebrating Mardi Gras, riding around, <laughs> I wrote this down too. I saw a Huguenot <laughs> Lane on the lake. <laughs> there you go and i know our french people are like it's not huguenot but listen honey we're in the south that's how we yeah. say it down here huguenot huguenot um you go down the south so my my dad's mom uh, my grandmother marianne who was the coolest of coolest ladies because she's no longer with us in body um but she you know she was like hiding like i always say guys she was hiding books on reincarnation under her bed for my granddad you know like she was the she was a very a free spirit we'll say it that way she was a free spirit and she grew up in south georgia in a little town called Quitman. I know that Angie knows it's near, mm -hmm. it's near Valdosta, which is near the Florida, mm -hmm. uh, Georgia border. But it's, it's she, her family came up through New Orleans as well. And mm -hmm. she was very proud of that. Uh, her last, I won't say her last name because I don't want to dox any of my extended family who is not on YouTube. But the way her, we said her, la, her main name was a very English way. Like you say, my name, very English in an English way now. But the way it's spelled is very French. And so she had a lot of French coming up through her, uh, her line as well. And so... You know, a lot of people that are, are, are heretically from the, heretically, that sounded bad, <laughs> heritage, his heritage of Southern do, does have, do have ties to one of those three major cities, either Charleston, Savannah, or New Orleans. Well, my last name is LeBlanc, and I say it French, and no one, everyone wants to put that C on there where you hear the pronunciation of it, but it just goes away like a lot of French words, you yeah. know? <laughs> the last three letters just kind of go, <laughs> go off to have a party by themselves. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> I laugh. I used to say that in high school. I had to study. I had to take both Spanish and French in high school. And I, and my mother is pretty good with French. Like she still can pretty speak it pretty well. Um, and my aunt, one of my aunts, can like flat out say she remembers all the French poems and stuff. And and I'd be like, but mom, you don't say half the word. I'm so confused. <laughs> it just kind of like, <laughs> which whenever you get used to hearing it, it does make it a very you know. Uh, a melody, a language that has a melody because it goes into one another. So my family are all Cajuns, you know, and so they it's broken French and English because um, uh, most of them ha had no formal education coming up. You know, they were put into they were put into the fields um, to work sugarcane and cotton and tobacco, um, just like all the other people that didn't have anything. You know, uh, uh, they were very very poor people, and that is why. Um, all of our dishes are cooked in one pot because they had one pot to cook out of. You know, it's not yeah. because they had a whole array of cutlery. You know, they had one yeah. good knife. And I can tell you right now, to this day, my mother has one good knife. That's not, that's an exaggeration. She's got a bunch of knives. But in her day to day, she's got one good knife. One good knife. She takes care of. And she's got that one pot that she will, she will kill you for. Do not put your hand on her one good pot. She's, you know, so there's a lot of just cultural things that come from uh, having nothing and developing a culture around that. And a lot of people say, you know, how can how, how hungry was the first person that ate a crawfish? You know, and yeah. so we were we we laugh about a mud all the time. bug. <laughs> yeah, we laugh about it all the time because I literally had crawfish on the back three acres of my parents property growing up and i'd get off the school bus and put my hip boots on and go run the crawfish tracks you know mm -hmm. and um it, it was so normal for me you know for people to to question it i was like but they're so good i never <laughs> questioned it they're so good and i think it's ingenious that people that were starving and had to live off the land because they really only got a portion of the crops that they tend it to so if you're working a tobacco farm you can't eat that no. so a lot of people uh had to survive on what they could find and now today it's not a, a mystery to me why Mardi Gras, cajun new orleans culture is around the world because we have made it so damn good yeah, yeah. 
And I want, and I will say, I'll put you guys. I'll put. I did a New Orleans. I have a Savannah playlist and a New Orleans playlist. Surprisingly, I don't have a Charleston playlist, which I probably should. I think I'm just so bored of the Charleston stories because that's where I kind of grew up. That I'm like, yeah. I'm just, wait. Let's talk about. I want to. I want to study stuff that I didn't grow up with. But I will say, I, I will put that down. And I know when I was studying, I believe, in my opinion, from the Tartarian stuff, that Canada was act is actually Gaul. Like that's the sorry for our friends right. in France right now. You have a great country, but that I don't. That's not the real France, um, according to what always said. The real France is, is Canada, and they they talk about so the uh, Acadians. I think is how what how yeah. they call themselves up in Canada. They, they were coming from France. They tell us this is the story they tell us. I don't think that this is accurate. But the wars of religions that were happening in France during this time, um, these were uh, Canadian. Uh, French people that wanted to stay Catholic. And so they went to what we call Canada now. And that's where we get the French Canadians uh, in the, in the area of France. But then after some wars happened, they actually displaced a lot of the, uh, the, we'll say the white people, the Acadians, and they kind of got, got pushed into slavery all over mm -hmm. the world. And then some of them were just dumped in, uh, yeah. in Louisiana, which at that point yeah. was very inhospitable. That's the thing about the South too. It's not just Louisiana. It's all across the Southeast. That's why I think the Southeast is so magical in a lot of ways. In Louisiana, you call them bayous. Um, in Georgia, we call them swamps. Swamp. Same mm -hmm. thing. They're the same thing. And it's a very inhospitable, uh, can be a very inhospitable uh, place to live. It's hot as balls down here. Um, I, my favorite Southern saying, which I'll never give up, is I'm sweating I'm sweating more than a whore in church. I will say Definitely. that into the new timeline too, because that is when you hear a Southern woman said, Lord, I'm sweating more than a whore in church. It is that funniest thing when you see an 80 year old woman say that. Um, Cause it's hot. It, it's so the weather is inhospitable and we learn a lot. Like I learned a lot really studying the voodoo faith, which is really big in the South. We think about it big in new Orleans, but it's all over the South. It's all over mm -hmm. the South is the voodoo, a voodoo faith. And, and like most things it's been inverted and what we see in Hollywood isn't necessarily the truth of what it really is. And yeah. we know that the voodoo practitioners were able to work in the bayous and the swamps and not be bothered by the alligators because they were able to be one with nature. They were able to find that calmness and be able to, to lean into nature, which is how people survived in the South anyway. I mean, that's Have I ever told you about my dad? My dad oh, had a pet alligator for like 21 years or so, like 20, about, yeah, until the, the game wardens killed him. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but and, and people would talk about him all the time. They're like, I, I was at dinner with um, a fancy, fancy dinner with, a group of girls and I, I knew some of them and didn't know some of them. And they found out um, like one of the girls is from Bostwick, Georgia, where my parents live. And one of the girls at the table said, well, what do you do out in Bostwick? There's just nothing there. And she says, well, on Fridays we go down Wagner Mill road and there's this man. And I'm like, like there's this man and he comes out and he wears a flannel shirt that's cut off at the sleeves and he's barefoot and he just gets right on in that lake with that alligator You're like Swims with him. i was like that's my dad you're who's about the, the guy man? from australia that uh, steve Irwin. your your dad's like the steve, steve Irwin, Irwin of, of the south <laughs> Well, it's true. And I think that's true for a lot of Southerners. Uh, you know, when I look back at, and I've always wondered this, listen, I've always wondered, even as a kid, I wondered this, like these white settlers from Northern Europe landed in Georgia, South Carolina in their petticoats and jackets. <laughs> and they kept yeah. their petticoats and jackets on in this fucking heat. Like no way that something's not when the, the locals, the natives, and I say that loosely because I don't even know what the natives are anymore. Um, we're wearing loincloths. Why didn't they go? You know what? That's a really good idea. They obviously understand that this heat is intense and we have to maybe shed some of this clothes, you know? And so there's a lot of questions. But but just so our viewers understand, like, that's what we talk about. That's why Nicole said richly Catholic. I Especially for our viewers who are not from the United States or not from the Southeast. That's a, that's a big deal as to why Angie and I never celebrated Mardi Gras. We did not get... Right. Mardi Gras or, or, or Ash Wednesday off of school because no one I grew up with was, was Catholic. They were all Baptists or Presbyterians. You got to, 
a few a few Methodists in there. All that you know the the book um, to to kill a monster. Methodists, they're good people. <laughs> Methodists, they uh they uh the well I remember to kill a mockingbird. We, you know we read that in school many times. When I was a little kid, my mother would play the movie for us with uh, Gregory Peck and my my favorite some of my favorite. Mm-hmm. There's some really great lines where Scout, the little girl, is talking about her how her family was different because they were Methodist. <laughs> Everybody yes. else was a Baptist. <laughs> um, you know, it's when, when people often ask me, I always think about that line, like, I'm really big now calling Yahshua, Yahshua. And I always yeah. think of that line in, in To Kill a Mockingbird, where the kid, because the kids call their dad Atticus, they don't call him dad. And right. the little boy's like, why you call your daddy Atticus? And Scout <laughs> goes, because that's his name. And that's what <laughs> people say why are you using yashua because that's his name that's his name, that's his name. um you call your daddy Atticus. but real quick i'm gonna say if you see true cajun people it it reminds me of the truth of yashua because number one um i'm the lightest one in my family most people are very dark skin yeah. And uh, we're mixed with all sorts of wonderful, you know, um, heritages. And, and we mostly have dark hair and we mostly have light eyes. And, um, and that tends to work really well in a place where you're, you know, 100% humidity and 100 <laughs> degrees. Because we're not burning all the time. We're tanning. And we go through shades of brown. You know, we're just like the other brown people that don't. And I've always said that. Even growing up, I'm like, there's not a box on this form when I have to put my origin. Because it just, it's not listed. But I'm like, all of these things, you know, like. Do you know that's so funny, Nicole, that you bring that up? Because I tan very well. Like, I Me don't. Too. Really, I, yeah, I tan very well. And my mother does as well. And um, I'm looking back, I'm like, well, yeah, there's some French heritage there. And and the skin, it's and I, I was like, well, maybe it's because we've just for generations been outside, our skin's adapted. But I will, I mean, I, I have, I've had many ex-boyfriends get very jealous because we'll sp- I'll spend like five minutes outside and I come back and I've changed races. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my hair gets lighter though. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it is, it is like you, the South, I always feel like the Southeast is if you're if you're gonna write a story, you know, song of the south, you're gonna write a story about the south. The south itself is its own character. Like the mm-hmm. land itself has its own personality, and um, it kind of reminds me of a Faulkner book, you know, which Faulkner lived in New Orleans for a while. Um, William Faulkner, he's one of my favorite Southern writers. The Unvanquished is a brilliant book. Um, and um, and so you know, Southerners all kind of band together against the world, but within the Southern community, there are opposing cultures and again the catholic so i just want to make that very clear yes in new orleans but we don't in, in protestant in the protestant world we don't celebrate lent we don't do lent we don't do any of that we do easter but we don't do lent and so i want to start with that if you ladies don't mind talking about why ash wednesday is what it is and leading up to easter ishtar which we're going to get into and then go back to fat tuesday so people can understand kind of the evolution of this holiday and listen mardi gras in my opinion looks looks fun as hell like i you know as long as you're not hurting anyone like go take your shirt off get your beads like you have fun like you drink with your friends you know have all the fun you want because that as ng and i said last week in our episode the victor hugo uh, quote to love another person is to see the face of god and so if you're mm-hmm. in an act of laughter and loving you're not it's, doing anything wrong. Yeah, and it's it's high vibration. You know, yeah, love, right. gratitude, and laughing is the best thing you can do to raise your vibes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So, so let's. Start. I just had the best time. I feel like my voice is so deep right now from like laughing, just yes. laughing so much for three days, three full on days of just laughing. You gotta pace yourself <laughs> you know, when you're at Mardi Gras. <laughs> I led the parade, y'all. I got to lead the parade last Look minute. At that. A what fire baton. <laughs> you were sitting fire? I tried, but I burnt my um the my outfit that I was wearing and so they took it from me. 
<laughs> Angie's a fire hazard. Someone gets yeah. a fire from Angie. <laughs> but, that, but that's awesome, right? And that's what, like, I mean, well, bring in the fake flames for Angie. <laughs> bring in the but I remember, I remember it when I was growing up in church, you know, Christmas Eve, we were we talked before we started filming, we were talking about Christmas, you know, so many people are like, I'm not celebrating Christmas. Why not? Christmas is fun as hell. You know, as long as you're not doing anything to hurt anyone and you're not you know, doing the rituals that are nefarious, then I'm trying to be careful what we say because we're on YouTube. You guys right. know what I'm talking about. Go decorate yeah. that tree. Go hang your yeah. baby's first ornament up. Do Santa Claus. Make the cookies. It's fun. Drink the eggnog. There's laughter. There's memories being created. Like, do yeah, not- It's your intention. It's your yes. intention of the holiday, of the day. It's just like your intention any random Wednesday of the week. It's about yeah. your intention. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all about that. And I, it makes me so sad when I see so many people who've gotten so vigilante and just mean, just fucking yeah. mean. That's what I had. So, I had to, oh, so in the South too, and there are in America and the East coast of American culture, we have this, this um, animosity or this uh, rivalry, the Yankees and the Southerners. So for those who are not from America, Yankees are specifically people from the Northeast. I know people from all over the world call us all Yankees. No, no, no. Those are people from the Northeast, not anybody, not anybody else. And my grandfather, my mom's dad, his mother was from Philadelphia. We don't know much about that side of the family because they were Yankees. They we they won't tell us much about. This. So if your last name is Stafford and you're from Philadelphia, hi, I'm your cousin. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, my mother, my mama would talk about her grandmamas growing up that she had her grandmama who she's named after on my Alice, and then she had um, Lula who was her mother's mother, and she loved her grandmama Lula because Lula was a Southern old lady and she just was so sweet. She 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 remembers Lula just cuddling them, but her dad's mom Alice was mean. And my mom goes, I think it's because she was a Yankee. She was Yankee. <laughs> she might have just been mean, mom. <laughs> she was mean. Um, but anyway, anyway. So so when we talk about now this too, I had somebody making comments about the evil eye that I wear, and I always want to say now, as much as I have disdain for the Bible because it's been super edited, there are some really good verses in there and one of them is judge not least ye be judged and that's a pretty good rule to live by mm -hmm. right judge not least ye be judged. um this is evil eye is not the illuminati eye it's from the east eastern europe so the turkish croatian culture and it wards off evil spells now this is one thing that terrifies me the most about this community we're in is that there are people that are in this community not the people watching this most of our viewers are we're preaching to the choir they are so bloodthirsty these truthers are so bloodthirsty yeah. and so that it scares me it's i'm like oh god oh my god you guys are more violent than the freaking controllers like this is this is scary yeah i said that the other day somebody said something about um oh the 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 balloon, the the UFO yeah. BS or whatever. <laughs> and I said, I'm really more worried about the people in DC than anything that anybody in, a, in the other country might think about doing. Yeah. I trust them more. And that's saying something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, we know that 90% of our, now I'm going to say this. I'm, I know we know 90% of the, the community we're in is infiltrators. We know that it's once you see it, you, you really can't unsee it. It's pretty, and you know, fair play to the other side for doing that, for paying people to prepping them to come in and dissuade people. Like, of course, that's what evil people are going to do. Right. That's what there's going to be playbook. Yeah. It's playbook. So, um, so I understand there are people out there that are pushing the fundamentalist narrative because Christianity is a form of Satanism. It is. And so there's a lot of violence there. If you mm -hmm. are worshiping a God that requires blood rituals, like sacrificing the person you call Jesus, you might not be worshiping the God of, of, of source of love because right. the true God is the only thing that can create. And so why would the true God need a blood ritual if right. he can create? That you're worshiping Lucifer at that point. Lucifer is yeah. the one that, and we're going to talk about that, you guys, because we know that Yeshua, the real Yeshua, was never crucified. Right. All right. So let's talk about where we get the resurrection and all that from. We get it from two people named Tammuz and Ishtar. Now, we also know that the real Yeshua was Egyptian, wherever that was in the world, whether that was <laughs> in Africa or here in Georgia, Georgia, whoever, or on another planet, who knows at this point, but he was Egyptian. 
So, but get this. So let me tell you a little bit about Tammuz. Tammuz, Tammuz was born in Bethlehem. He was a shepherd who tended to the souls in the afterlife. Sound familiar? Um, wore a crown of thorns. Tammuz did. Um, annually sacrificed for the salvation of mankind. Uh, he also was connected to the rulers of Egypt at that point. Um, he was died. He died. He was died. <laughs> Great grammar there. He died and was resurrected. I'm thinking, what color was he? They died him. I know, they died him. <laughs> he was blue. No, um, he died and was resurrected. And he was considered the only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Tammuz was also known to be a healer. He healed people. So I put in my notes here, the church manipulated the Tammuz story, either A, to show us the truth, or B, to confuse us on the true teachings of Christ. Now, with this being said, I'm not saying Tammuz was bad, and we're going to get into that. Yeah. So Ezekiel, Ezekiel 8.14, this is actually in the Bible, because you know they have to tell you the truth at some point. I'm going to read you the verse, Ezekiel 8.14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So this Tammuz culture was really big all over the Fertile Crescent, from Egypt to, you know, wherever the Fertile Crescent was, wherever that, this, this was a huge story. So let's, let's talk about the death of Tammuz. So Tammuz was 40 years old. And he was out hunting wild boar. And he ended up being killed by a wild boar. How many days do we, is Lent? 40. 40 days. <laughs> After he died, his mother demanded that the people fast for 40 days in honor of Tammuz. And now they would mark houses with a T. What do you get marked on your head? At <laughs> a T. <laughs> Ashes and the sign of a cross. Which, mm -hmm. is, a which is a T. It's T. So the cross that Christians wear, this is why I say judge not least ye be judged. The cross Christians wear has nothing to do with Yeshua. It's the mark of Tammuz. Which is totally fine because we're going to talk about Yahshua and Magdalene and their relationship with right. Tammuz and Ishtar too. But you just have to understand you can't go around calling some cultures evil, evil eyes to ward off evil spells, evil when you're wearing a damn cross and you think it's, and it's not, and you, you don't know what that actually means. It's about Tammuz. not just wearing it, shoving it in people's faces uh -huh. and then proclaiming that it means something it doesn't. That does yeah. No one's lied about this. This has been very honest. That this is to ward off evil spells. But 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 you've been lied to about the cross. There's no, there's and if you look in a, I saw a picture of some inside of some Freemason temples, which women te technically aren't allowed to be in. But there are pictures. They have the three crosses up too. Mm -hmm. You know that the Freemasons are satanic. They worship human sacrifice. So so where has this been manipulated? Well, all right. So again, forty days of Lent. Ash Wednesday is the mark of Tamu. Now, what to pick? Now, I'm a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for a very long time. But what is traditionally served on Easter? What meat? We do ham. 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 So, <laughs> who killed? What animal killed Tammuz? <laughs> ham. Oh yeah, a so, big pig. A big pig. So that's what you're eating on Easter. That's on purpose because that's the celebration <clears throat> of Tammuz. Now let's talk about Ishtar. So we talk about twin flames. What are twin flames? Twin flames, well, there's many different theories. Uh, the two biggest theories are twin flames are the soul decides to incarnate into two different bodies, but it's a full soul, feminine and masculine. Other people say the soul splits and becomes feminine and masculine. Regardless, it's the same soul. Whether it's a whole soul, it's the same soul, a divine feminine and a divine masculine. Um, I do understand there are cases where it's two women or two men who are in homosexual relationships, totally fine by me whatever it's just two people that are the same soul so like magdalene and yashua were twin flames tammuz also had a twin flame her name was ishtar all right so ishtar is considered to be the mother of the anunnaki so <laughs> it just the, 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 it just the, gets better and better and it's true it, i mean imagine they told this in vacation bible school <laughs> like, <laughs> 
I know I'm sitting I'm sitting here like that was never told to me when I was no growing. no that never was never told to me screw walking on water this is where it's real juicy okay <laughs> so to, uh, Ishtar is considered the mother of the Anunnaki where who are the Anunnaki they if we go back to Atlantis they are holders of the twelve the tw the tw I'm gonna if I can speak twelve real tribes of Israel which are galactic. So we talked about this a lot with the Emerald Tablets, the Anunnaki, the giants. So who Mardi Gras is about Dionysus, who was a giant, an Anunnaki. Some were good, some were bad, just like human beings. I'm finding that with all types of species. Yes. There's it's free will choice. Don't doesn't matter if you're born a Draco or a human or a Palladian or a Lyran. It is your choice whether we know that there are some Draco that are good that have gone good. It's your yeah. choice. That's that's the freedom that creator gives us. Yeah. So she was also the goddess of love, fertility, and war. Now, war is either good or bad. It can be used by both. We like it's like the planet Mars. Mars is the warring planet, which is Tuesday. It's the day of Mars. We're filming this on a Tuesday. Um, Mr. T has a lot of Mars in his chart. He's using it for good. I don't know about Hillary Clinton. But she had Mars in her chart. Do so you guys see how this is like? Yeah. These are just tools. all about intention. It's, it's all, all about intention. intention. Yes. So when Tammuz dies, he gets sent down to the underworld. Now, we looked at this story in great detail in The Return of the Divine Sophia. What is the underworld? Planet Earth is considered the underworld. Right where we are. <laughs> right right where we are. <laughs> and sometimes, I will say, sometimes, I remember I remember when my great-granddaddy Paul was still alive as a little kid down in Quitman, Georgia, and we'd have to go. He had an old plantation. They lived on it. It was a dairy farm. Old, and those gnats. And I remember being so hot. Oh, and with those yeah. gnats in your eyes. That's That, to me, is the pits of hell. So, <laughs> so, um, so that makes sense to me. Yeah, it totally makes sense. So Tammuz now has to come back to come down to Earth. And there's this is a huge story. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna do the cliff notes version of the story for you guys, or else this would be like a five hour video. Um, so Ishtar decides that she's gonna go down to the underworld or Earth to get to Moose. It's her other half, and so she goes through the seven gates, giving up something at every gate. This is considered the journey of no return. All right. Once she's in the in the underworld, she herself becomes enslaved. We all become enslaved. And what happens at each gate, you're giving up something. Now, in her story, it's metaphor. She's giving up clothes. It's amnesia. Mm -hmm. You're coming yeah. through and you're remembering. Yeah. So she comes into the under underworld. And she remembers. She knows there's someone she's looking for. She finds him. But he's forgotten who she is, but there's a recognition. Kind of like when you meet people in this world and you you, you know them, yeah. but you don't know how you know them. Because you've gone through the seven gates. And a lot of us, according to the law of one, and I believe this, a lot of us here on the earth right now, volunteered like Ishtar did. Volunteered to come. We didn't have to come back down. We volunteered to come back down. Like fucking dumbasses. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what were we thinking? Um, but we volunteered. So she volunteered. So so, and I do kind of feel like because there's volunteer, uh, Tammuz did not volunteer. He was killed and sent down. But because Ishtar volunteered, there was still a little bit, a little bit of memory she held on to. There was a conscious choice here, right? Anyway, she goes through all of this stuff um, where they find they end up coming back. They end up resurrecting. Yeah. So, what is the celebration of Easter? The I'm resurrection. <laughs> the resurrection. The where resurrection. They go back into the um, heavenly heavenly worlds, right? And you can, guys, again, this is a very long story. There's the poem of Tamu, Tamu, the poem of Ishtar and Tammuz. Um, Ishtar is also considered the queen of heaven with Tammuz as her uh, consort. And so now this is what, now this is what, and this was all through Sumerian culture, Egyptian culture. In fact, one of the first females to ever write down a recorded uh, a recorded story was the story of Tammuz and Ishtar. She was a priestess of Ishtar, um, and she uh, she's actually one of the first named authors in the world. Um, and Houdina, I don't know if I'm saying her name right, and she wrote the Exaltation of Ishtar. 
And um, and so, and I also wrote here, Ishtar's brother is Gilgamesh. Hi. Who is also Anunnaki, a giant. <clears throat> and allegedly, allegedly is the reason why we went to war in Iran is because they found Gilgamesh, who has been in stasis. So this is very fascinating. And so now let's talk about Yahshua and Magdalene. So I found this to be absolutely hysterical. And I thought, wow, this makes way more sense. And if I were a human being living in Magdalene and Yahshua's time, especially if I were a man, I would totally be down for this holiday. So <laughs> the, whole, the whole story of going into the underworld and being resurrected again is really big metaphor of us. You know, we come to earth, we come back, we go up and down. But we also, we talk about the shadow work. We also have to go into our own underworld. Like as Magdalene says in her gospel, we have to descend before we can then ascend. Right. We have to drop down before we can come back up again. That's going all the way down. And you guys remember from the Emerald Tablets, they talk about the chakra system. They start at the top, though, and work down. Usually they work up from the bottom. But they And I thought, ah, interesting. They started from the top and went down to come back up again. So what they would do every year, now the Essenes, which Magdalene and Yahshua were in Essenes. So that's Isis. E-S-S-E -S -S -E is how Isis was spelled back then. So the Essenes, Tennessee, which is the country of Isis. I yeah. was just thinking when you even mentioned volunteer, like volunteer, it's aren't the, it's oh, not the all oh, listen. It's my granddad, volunteer. my dad's dad was from the, from Knoxville, Tennessee. He went to the University of Tennessee, and he like pushed us to be a volunteer to go to the ten that that's that's their mascot. Yeah, none of us went to Tennessee. <laughs> none of our, oh my God. No, um, but yeah. So so Tennessee. So what they would do every single year. In, in the Christian world, we have the passion plays, right? Where we reenact the death of Jesus and he, the resurrection. They would kind of do the same thing, but it was Tammuz to to and Ishtar. So what they would do, this cracks me up because I'm like, oh, I see what the controllers did. They took some of the truth and they twisted it and made it into with a Mithra, Mithra story and created a Jesus story. Mm -hmm. They would reenact. So the high priests and priestesses of, of Isis, of the Illicit Mysteries, they would reenact this story every single year around the springtime. The springtime notoriously is also the start of the new year, right. which makes sense because the earth is re re being reborn again. Mm -hmm. So the men, the men folk, the messiahs, because a messiah means a phallical penis or a pillar, a penis. So Yahshua is nobody's messiah, but Magdalene's. Okay. Your husband is your, your part, your other half. Maybe not even your husband, your twin, your other half is your Messiah. If you're a female, if you're the female energy, you're the Visca Pisces. This is how they would write it on their wedding invitations, whatever those looked like back then. Um, and so the Messiahs, not just Yahshua, but all the men in this high order would go into tombs. You know, a man cave. Yeah. Basically like drink. In my mind, they're drinking beer, playing poker for three days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm like hanging out and then three days later their visca pisces their their <laughs> women folk would come and get them out of the cave because the story was to moose dropped into the underworld ishtar made the choice to come get him and then re-resurrect together so in the yeah. story we hear in church who was the first person to go to the tomb <clears throat> magdalene magdalene why mm -hmm. is that that was not by she knew he was alive <laughs> no one died. They were reenacting shit. Like, but it was a reenactment. And she so to get her Messiah. <laughs> let's go, listen, three days was long enough. Let's go. Days. She's like, got five children. She's like, listen, you've been drinking beer, playing poker long enough. We got five kids. You got to come home and help me now. You know, so <laughs> I don't so, care if your head hurts. Get out of that green cave. Yeah. I don't care if you got a headache. You got a migraine. Well, baby over here needs his daddy. I need to go to the spa because three days is too long, you know? Um, and so that's, that's the story. And so, so in saying that when we celebrate Easter, Easter was always my least favorite holiday. And I'll tell you guys why. Usually by the time Easter rolled around down here in deep South, it was already, already hot as fuck. And we would have to put these like Easter dresses on with Easter hats, hats on and stockings and take pictures and go outside and hunt Easter eggs. I was miserable. I hated Easter so much. It would smell just the heat. The humidity smells sometimes. Like it gives a smell. <laughs> um, and I don't care. We would be at the country club, the finest of the finest, but it would be hot and stinky and muggy. And we'd have to smile with our hats on and our baskets. <laughs> miserable. 
with like 20 other kids and like polyester suits and while well, the parents like y'all get together smile oh no Donnie went looking get back together you know it, it was I hated it so much and like the Easter Bunny I mean we would get some little toys from the Easter Bunny but it was mostly just candy Santa was yeah. way better Santa was yeah. way better so um yeah. So in all of that, all of the celebrations of Easter, the egg coloring, the uh, bunnies, all that kind that's all about new life. So that's mm -hmm. Ishtar, and Ishtar is the goddess of fertility as well. So this is not something that you need to give up. If you want to practice Lent, and I know a lot of times for the, you, you give something up, am I correct? Like you, you yeah, make yeah. a sacrifice, like sugar, yeah. coffee, something like that. Yeah, um, a, lot of, a lot of people stop drinking, or, or they give up chocolate, or they... Um, like whatever that, whatever, mainly people say, well, you got to give something that's going to really affect you. You know, like really want to feel it. You want to sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. You want to be like, gosh, you know, like it's a penance. It's another thing, you know, in the Catholicism, they want you to suffer. Whatever it is that <laughs> wants you, you know, makes you feel like you're suffering for 40 days. That's what they want you to give up for, for Lent. I can, yeah. see, I, very, if you're, if you're a young child, just tell your parents you want to give up broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember asking my mom that once when I was a kid, like why? I, cause we would, we would study about Mardi Gras class, in like in like lower school, elementary school, but we never, you know, tell. Me. And mom would be like, why? Why don't we do Mardi Gras and Lent? And mom would say, well, you know, Jesus already sacrificed. We don't need to sacrifice. Well, no. Well, let me talk about the fasting too, because we're doing fasting in the Shadow Work Challenge. That's we're in the middle of the, it's mm -hmm. coming up. And you, you don't have to do it. I want to make that very clear with everything in the shadow work challenge. I mean, we're not running a cult here. Like you have free will choice with everything. I've, I've said that many, there's a lot of things to do during the day. I wrote the challenge with the full awareness that you're not, might not be able to do everything. And that's totally fine. It's, it's your experience. But when we fast, like in spirituality, which is what Yashua and Magdalene really practiced in, in these, these uh, Buddha, um, you know, whatever these, these, these ascended, masters will call them it was a spiritual there was no penance there was no because being here i mean from the ishtar to, to move story this is the underworld this is hell you know mm -hmm. this is it you, you're you're signing up for a life where there's naturally going to be suffering and, and suffering is real and that's how you find the friction right. but with fasting or giving something up there's usually a spiritual purpose in, in the true spiritual work behind it where you are actually looking for something deeper in yourself. Like I know Shanti wrote for the fasting portion of our shadow work challenge, the big hunger versus the little hunger. Like, what are you really hungry for? What is it really that's bothering you? Cause food is just food, you know? So, so let's, let's look beyond that. So if you are fasting or giving up sugar or giving up coffee or something, um, don't do it as a penance. Do it as something to, to better yourself to deep right. so that you can move away distractions or chemical distractions so you can go deeper with it. I just I really want to make that clear. Like the God of the our God, the God that we worship, source, doesn't want you to be in any more pain than you have to be in. You know, you already signed up for some hard lessons coming into this world. Right. Don't you know, Catholicism is just wrought in shame, blame, guilt. <laughs> You know, like that's how, that's their biggest motivator, right? And I remember I was probably in second grade and I had, it was during Lent and I had given up chocolate and I had a friend that came over and there was some candies or something in the cabinet and we were sitting in the middle of the living room going through these chocolate candies and then just in a matter of conversation, she's like, oh, what'd you give up for Lent? And it dawned on me that I had given up chocolate. And I had been sitting there eating chocolate and I busted out crying because I was like, I felt so much immediate guilt because that's the culture, you know, like you cannot cheat. You cannot have what you gave up. Repent, for child, Lent. repent. Yes. And I'm like, I went right into my mom. I'm like, do I need to make myself throw up? And now I think about that part of me that was at, at second grade was already so mind warped mm -hmm. you know because the truth was withheld and it was made into something it, it shouldn't have been in second grade i was already like i need to throw up the chocolate i ate because it it's, oh. it gave me so much blame shame guilt and i'm like but now today i'm like that's just so catholic that's yeah just, and I, so I, I don't have children but if i i don't know if i would let my kids do something like that just because i i would you know, this babies are just babies. They need to be able to play and eat chocolate. And, but that's, yeah. that's what we're conditioned to be like, right. It's like given, given, it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was, um, 
there was a comedian. Uh, I was watching a stand up. A guy, I can't remember the same guy from the South. And he talks about how like one summer he got baptized 20 times because he would yeah. just like, mess up and they'd be like, dunk me again, pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know people that have done that. I do. I know people that have, they just didn't feel like it was real the first time, you know, <laughs> this morning I was, I was looking at Ash Wednesday and that kind of thing. And um, nobody responded to my tweet. I just pulled it up, but I tweeted, I don't know about you, boo, but I don't want a priest wiping ashes on my forehead and telling me, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. <laughs> so, that That's was one important. of the things <laughs> It and and that the priest would do that, do it and say this. I mean, I don't know that yeah. they, that's all, all true, but nobody responded. <laughs> hey, um, so in order for people that are, you know, working or whatever it is to be able to um, be compliant with Ash Wednesday, they have, you know, the, the priest and stuff will be out in the parking lot. You can do drive through Ash Wednesday. <laughs> I'm not even lying. And so people will take their lunch break and then they come back and they got their smudge on their, on their forehead. Their yes. And, and so as I was waking up, I was, uh, and, and a lot of the, um, healthcare system is controlled by, um, Catholic organizations, right? It's and especially, like yeah, especially here. And so they would, um, like the, the leadership would come around and they're like, with the the you can go down to the chapel and get your ashes and I'm like no I'm good <laughs> and so then of course people were like well, where's your ashes right because it's just accepted that everyone here is Catholic you know and I'm like I'm I don't participate in putting someone's like symbology of dead ashes on my forehead yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, not doing that. the point is the point of the Tammuz and Ash and Ishtar story is the resurrection of both yeah. of them is the fact that yeah. they came to human and humaning is hard and they figured it out. They worked on their shit and they, yeah. You know, so it's, it's well, yeah. So, and, and with that, so with that, with that being said with Lent, you're giving something up, you're going into this penance. So then let's flip back now to Mardi Gras. Cause Mardi Gras is like, I just love the word debauchery because that's, it's just fun debauchery. <laughs> and like today's fat Tuesday. So the feast, the feast before the feast. Ash Wednesday. So it's like, you know, I know all, I know we got some ladies, maybe some men watching who have done, gone to Jenny Craig a few times and gone to Weight Watch a few <laughs> times. And I know my mama went a lot when I was a kid and I would go to those meetings with her. And every, every eve before going to Weight Watch the next day, my mama would be like, we're going out and we're going to have a big old meal. So it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? It's like the blast shebang before. Yeah. yeah so, you know, um, the, the story that gets told anyway is that everyone revels. They are reveling in that time. And that's where you get the revelry of Mardi Gras. And it starts about two weeks before Ash Wednesday. And so, um, and people have their different little subculture parades, you know, so you have Bacchus and you have Endymion. Endymion is the big one for like the medical science community and whatever. And so they have all the little neighborhood parades, which are huge now, and it all gets more and more grand and more and more grand. And you have a ball. Every every uh, parade has a ball. And so everyone gets king and queen of the whatever parade of Bacchus or Endymion or whatever. And they are there the whole time you know, um, blessing everyone and everyone is bowing down to them, just like any other royalty, whatever. And at, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it gets longer and longer and longer. And so you're partying from morning until night and morning until night, morning until night. And the big thing is that you feast because you're going to have to do without for 40 days. You know, so you're filling your yourself with all the wine and daiquiris and food and everything so that because for 40 days, you're going to have to walk the straight and narrow and give up all the things that you that um, you've you're been prepared. You know, I'm saying and I laugh because Angie was crowned queen um, a few years back of uh, when in her little Mardi Gras thing. And I'm <laughs> laughing and I'm thinking, you know, the God that I know is a fun fun source yeah. energy and maggie is so i'm obviously right now i'm way closer to magdalene than yashua she's fun and i mm -hmm. think about this in my head i'm like it feels like mardi gras is actually more of the god inspired celebration than than lent is because yeah, lent yes. just seems dark and and stressful 
and where Mardi well, Gras is just love and laughter. When I, when I think about it like an overview, knowing what I know now, not from where I was before, I feel like it was the you know, like the awaken, they were having fun. They were celebrating the life. They were celebrating the, the, all the things. And then the controllers came in, which at the time was the Catholic church and said, no, you have to give these things up and give them to us because we're the caretakers of the good. Right. Yeah. And then do without, and then we'll give you some more souls back after you've, uh -huh. you know, served your penance. <laughs> and you're going to be very, very grateful for that because because we allowed you to have it back. Yeah, it's it's all it's all in mind. And I, I want to reiterate right, that people I mean, I know everybody watching right now, again, we're preaching to the choir, but I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over again. Because it, darkness cannot create anything you guys nothing that you see on this world, be it Mardi Gras, be it Hanukkah, be it Lent, be it Easter, be anything darkness didn't create that god did source did mm -hmm. but what they can do what the darkness can do is the darkness can steal from the light and invert it mm -hmm. and that's what we see happening and so like i was saying with the whole tammuz ishtar story it's a beautiful story i know a lot of people in this great awakening who have discovered the tammuz ishtar story and they think tammuz is like a demon i'm like no magdalene and yashua honored the story of Tam they they weren't worshiping they were venerating. There's a difference between showing respect to a metaphoric story. Um, it's like the Ulyssian mystery that covered that a while ago. And I want to go do a, a Ulyssian mystery because it sounded badass. Um, it was the Dimitri uh, Persephone story of, of falling into hell and re -res resurrecting again, which is all symbolic, you guys. It's all symbolic about you going into your own self and resurrecting your own energy. <clears throat> And that's ascension. You know, we, yeah. we when, when you go through the the, the, sh the layers of the shadows that this world creates and you get down to the very, very basic root chakra of our of who we mm -hmm. are, and then we start to rebuild based on truth and we start to ascend because our consciousness is, is rising and our frequency is rising. And that is the resurrection of us from the darkness. Yeah. And it is not a it's not a place on a map. It's not a physical thing. It's a it's a being. It's a it's a heightened awareness. It's a state of right. Consciousness. Just the whole the whole like antichrist thing too. I think that is Christ consciousness. And so exactly. just the other day I told somebody, I was like, I think Jesus is the antichrist. <laughs> you know, like well, people have said that, and we know that the person Jesus is not someone that actually lived. Um, it was a created story because um, Jesus is not his name, y'all. If you think that the Bible isn't edited, first of all, that's cognitive dissonance because literally you can just look that up and you can see the different edits. Um, second of all, I would say, well, the JSON didn't exist back then. Right. So now you see one edit. Why did they change his name? It was Yeshua. Yeah. It was Yeshua. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, it doesn't really matter what people's names are. It doesn't matter their cultural background, but it matters in the sense that you can see where the lie is once you understand it. Right. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's all, and that's, um, that's what Yahshua and Magdalene were teaching. If you like the, uh, the gospel of Thomas, which is one of the, probably one of the more, more famous missing right. books of the Bible. Um, it's just, it, it literally, it reads like a bunch of notes. Like there's no, there's no beginning, middle, and there's a story, linear story. It's just like someone taking notes of things that their teacher was saying. And one thing Yahshua says in that, when they're asking about the kingdom of heaven, he, and I'm paraphrasing the verse, it's a very famous verse. And I don't know it word for word, so I'm paraphrasing. He says like, well, if heaven mm -hmm. is in the skies, the birds will get there first. If heaven is in the water, the fish will get there first. Heaven is inside of you. Only yeah. you have the power to access that. Mm -hmm. And that's what he and Magdalene, we see that in Magdalene's uh, gospel. I have Megan Watterson's uh, translation and commentary here that I went through on my channel, Magdalene's gospel, where she taught this as well. You know, she, and, and it, for the Magdalene manuscripts, she, I know, I know the church is going to hate to hear this. There's some church folk that are going to hate to hear this. She woke up first. She was, yes, yeah. she was teacher. Yes. We were the same age. They, it wasn't like she was like, she went a cougar. She went around like cougaring for <laughs> young men. They were the same age. Um, but she she was his teacher initially and woke him up to the truth. Um, women just mature faster than boys. But, <laughs> yeah. but, 
but in that time too, there was a lot of matri there was like a matrilinear line where the, the women were very were valued and very important anyway. And so there was yeah. a respect there. It didn't really matter that she was a female um, or he was a male. They were respected <laughs> equally. And when you think about, you know, the darkness not being able to create anything, it makes perfect sense that they would at that time see who is has this following, who has the praise, who has the love, who has the devotion, because yeah. we want that energy. We can't create that energy. So we're going to take that, that energy and we're going to mix it with this other person, this other group that has that. And we're going to create something that everyone can follow. Everyone can follow. And then we're going to make them you know, have this guilt, shame, blame mentality that if you don't fall in line with that, then you're nothing. And that's how they flipped all the things that were good and totally innocent to things that are bad, things that are not of good intentions, I'll say. Yeah, it's all inverted. Every and, that, and I will say out of all the 66 canonized books of the Bible, the book of Revelation is probably the most accurate. Yeah. And it does speak about this, that everything is going to be inverted. Like everything is inverted. And, um, and like so it's already happened <laughs> and it's already, shit's already happened. That's why I keep like, that is one thing that really makes me laugh hard besides the whole Messiah, like fundamentalist, um, when they're singing their songs to the Messiah, that makes me giggle now because I'm like, you're basically <laughs> creating a porno at this point because that means the penis. <laughs> um, he's not your Messiah, honey. He's Magdalene. You got your own Messiah. Um, and if you don't have a Messiah, there's plenty of shops where you can go buy one. <laughs> <laughs> So there's lots in Atlanta. Um, they're, they're the best kinds of shops. I love, I would go into girl with girlfriends to those shops. It's hysterical. It's so fun. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, and, but also like when people, per, when the Tartaria information came out and I started really diving deep into it, it was shocking at first because that meant nothing we've been told is true. But then I was like, wait a minute. That means we're at the end of the story. Yeah, a thousand years of peace has already come, and that's the thing because we know Gog and Magog, as mentioned in Revolution, was going to be the most bloodiest, hardest battle. Yeah, and what the the golden age that we're going into doesn't have a end date. No, it's an ascension. Yes, yes, and it is not for everyone because people do have free will choice. Yes, yeah. and um, not every person that you walk around with actually has a soul. Some people oh, I know. Oh, we're going to be, okay, so I have a guest that's coming on, and I just talked to him today. I think we're going to try to film either tomorrow or Thursday. He's going to stay. Um, this guest is going to not show his face and put a fake name up, and we're going to talk about the organic portals, which are people that don't have souls. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. so interested in that because I, I sense it sometimes, like when I'm around people. Um, mm -hmm. I just go, you know, my best friend and I will will both see it at the same time too. She's like, that's not that's an it. That's a an soul. NPC. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that right there is not a soul. Mm -hmm. And um, and once I don't you even know, know how to it, explain it really, but yeah, yeah we, once you know, once you know that, because that's the big thing that people have not been made aware of. But once you know it, it, it makes so much sense in their behavior and their lack of behavior yeah. and and all the other things and and then they just kind of for me anyway they just fall away like they just don't even exist anymore because i'm on a completely different frequency than that like yeah. i don't even recognize that well they um i'll give you guys a little teaser and this this person that's coming on he's also a law of one expert as well so he's gonna do a show with Catherine edwards and me later on um he law the law of ones they're they're different from psychopaths um organic people without souls so they also organic portals ha have the lower three chakras but they don't have the upper four they have to have the lower three triad in order to be in a body but they don't have the upper four so they tend to mimic they mimic spirituality they mimic people and i asked this person and we can talk about this on the show i said um what's going to happen when the ascension happens to the people without souls and he goes i think they're just going to disintegrate yeah, if it's been explained to me like um, Avengers Endgame when he snaps his fingers and the they turn to dust. Oh, I don't. I've never seen that, oh, but it's almost like the yeah. yeah that's There's a lot of truth in Marvel movies. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And um and that is I think they call it the blip or the event or something. And it was you know one of the one of the evil characters from an, an off world or was like I'm going to save the world by decreasing the population by fifty percent in a snap you know and, and that's and that's the they say that the 50% of the world population is organic portals yeah. yes I know 
I'm telling you. So whenever it, it's, it's symbolic of what they say will happen. And that is like literally in a fl with the solar flash is the theory. Yeah. It'll be like the snap of the finger and these people that aren't really whole souls of the light, light beings in alignment with source, they will just cease to exist because they were yeah. only here as like programmable matter. Yes. Condition to begin with. Yep. That's what the law of one says. And, and they will mimic. So they don't have, they might show emotion, but it's like a mimic. It's different from a psychopath. Um, psychopath. It's like the baby doll that you can feed and then you make them poop and cry. Like they yeah. do the things, but it's not real. No. And they will mimic you. So they will mimic the upper chakra. So if you, you know, and I, I was, I was like, holy shit. Cause I've had someone do that to me recently. Like everything was mimicked that I did. Every story was mimicked. And I was like, holy shit. Um, because they don't have, and they don't have higher selves. So they don't have higher selves. Only people with actual souls have higher mm -hmm. selves. They don't have soul contracts, organic portals. They have no soul contract and they're put, they're like empty shells that can do the, they're like, they're like marionettes and they're yeah. always controlled by higher density, negative beings. Yeah. Do they because know? They're created, they're, they're created in the ai the negative ai of the of the universe basically well yeah. do people that don't have souls do they know they don't have a soul <laughs> from what i understand no they don't know they don't um know. yeah and um i can tell you angie i can tell you you got a soul so don't worry about it. i know we know who i was <laughs> yeah you got you got a soul girl i can definitely you can tell when you start to study it um <laughs> Because I've been looking into it and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, it's, it's totally. And as a yoga teacher, that's really valuable information to me to have as well because not, they don't have, they don't have upper chakras. They don't, they can't because the heart on a hatha all the way up, that's all soul based. Mm -hmm. That's all spirit based. So like yeah. when you move into your next incarnation, your lower chakras are going to change a little bit because those are the triad of the three that ground to the earth or wherever planet you're on. And the upper ones, so literally they're humans. So like law of one, like animals, dogs, cats, they have souls. Mm -hmm. so they're Horses, humans walking around mm -hmm. that we, and we as humans value human life over animal life, but yet they're animals. I don't, I value them equally, to be honest with you. Um, that really spoke volumes to me in the missing books of the Bible, where Yasha was, was like, are the animals not your brothers and sisters? Do, do they not have, breathe the same air you breathe? You know, mm -hmm. God knows every hair on your dog's head, just like he knows every hair on your head. Um, mm -hmm. I believe my dog was sent to me. He's a soul, soulmate of mine. Um, mm -hmm. So there are animals that have souls and there are humans that do not. Yeah. Yeah. And they're different. Again, they're different from psychopaths. And so, so like the controllers are not organic portals. Right. They are people, they are, they are souls who have really picked the negative path, but yeah. they are using this is a war you guys and that's one thing i find comical because when gog and magog happened basically god was like all is fair in this time period do what you're going to try to do to destroy my people and we'll see who wins at the end because i think god knew we would always figure it out anyway so they brought down these people and these people are very easily controllable they uh they they get controlled by dark ai or higher density beings um mm -hmm. and that's and they're able to do horrible things to people and not really feel guilty about it because and they, they have yeah they have no conscience about it because they have yeah. no consciousness yeah it does not exist for them yeah you can have i mean we were talking about it to prep for the show you can have like a family like even look and there's the other element of wanderers which i think i think all three of us are wanderers i think most of the people watching are wanderers what are wanderers i believe wanderers are the 144,000 mm -hmm. mentioned in the bible um as Tamara calls them, they're the the five percent or three percent. I can't remember which of, of Earthlings that are like sixth grade souls. Uh, these are the people that volunteered, the volunteers that came down to like Ishtar that came down to Earth because at this point, Law of One really speaks about this. This is very important for people watching right now. Now, if you're someone that has real true emotion and you really feel things and you're empathetic, you are not an organic portal, honey. Right. That's the big thing: is that empathetic, the empathy. Um, the feeling of things that's, that's, you know, um, so the, when this time period came around and there was planning like a military room planning going on, 
they asked souls. There were some souls that needed to come back karmically because they were there for the fall of Atlantis. I, I think I was there for the fall of Atlantis and I think I karmically needed to come back, but I think also volunteered as well. Um, I think a lot of us, same thing. And yeah. um, they, that's the hard thing is these dark souls that are also in mirror it on the same side darkness can't create anything it can only steal from the light and invert or mirror so you have wanderer souls of the light and you also have souls from the darkness that came down to match that of the wanderers only problem is the darkness has had uh, has had like a, a jump start at this because like in my situation people knew who i was before i knew who i was on the dark side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've had to figure it out while going through this battle, but that's just how it is. And the organic portals get thrown in as like a wild card to mess with you and to take you yes. off balance. Yeah, because yes. the, um, the the people with eyes to see and ears to hear, like we like to say, you know, whenever um, a true soul being starts to wake up and realize who they are and the power that they have, and then they start taking that power back, we become the most powerful beings in the universe. Um like angels don't have free will choice. Angels get a a a uh, book of instructions. Like this is your wheelhouse. You're going to help with addictions. You're going to help with this. You're the the guardian angel of the per the person born over these four days. This is your job. If they never call your name, you don't get an action because you don't have free will choice. You ha they have to call you in, and when you do, this is what you're going to do. And then for you have us humans who either volunteered to come down because we're star seeds or whatever the case may be. We're divine souls or we're just whole souls of the light. And we can take all of that in. We have free will choice. We can, we can decide to go to the light and leave the darkness behind. We can cut the AI attachment. So we're not controllable. Right? No. As long as we come out of that matrix thinking and get off the hamster wheel, then we are the most proud. That's why they want to control us. And that's why they don't want us having the, yeah. the memory and the fear and our power. Cause as soon as we do, we, that's why we won. That's yeah. And I see this, I see this in my youngest daughter too. She deals with a whole lot of, they're try they try to control her mm -hmm. and she just sees through it all. And she is uncontrollable. Well, I she's will uncontrollable. She does not care about, you know, what it, it, about looking a certain way or fitting in a certain way. She says, I'm here for this yeah. reason. She's and already, beyond, she's already ascended beyond their level. Well, and that's what they, so, and again, my guest coming on, I keep wanting to say the name, but I, I, I know he wants to keep it like, private. Um, he, kids, I think is under the age of 25, or maybe it's 20, 20 25, something like that, already born in their fourth density bodies. So yeah, kids, the they are already one. born in a fourth density body. It's not active yet. Now, with that being said, here's the cool thing. Us, so these kids came down from fourth density. We came down from, from fifth or sixth density. Because mm -hmm. we are the ones that are, our soul is old enough to be able to go through um, the changes that are. So what's I mean, we can feel. I mean, I, I know I look tired today. Like we can, we we are in a human body. Like we're feeling the the effects of having a nervous system, of having to sleep, of having to eat. Um, our soul is like, let's go, 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 go. But our body's like, hold on, sister, I'm yeah. tired. You know. So we, our bodies, though, and I think we already are going. They're starting to go through some of these changes. I was talking to Gordon um, from Enough Is Enough about this. Like you look at a lot of the people of the light who are on the on the truther community, and they are starting to look younger. They're starting to look more vibrant. Um, yeah. So we, our souls, are actually strong enough to to handle that evolution of yeah. the body changing. Whereas the kids coming in now. They are fourth density, they're not third density, but they're already in the body that basically just like that flick of that switch, the body will go yeah. into fourth density. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's, and yeah, all the souls who aren't wanderers, I'll just put this out there before we get to that show. So if you guys have any questions about that, all the souls who are not wanderers um, or, or are not organic portals, so that's a percentage, you're considered a high priority soul. So what that means according to the law of one. So for the wanderers, the wanderers have already ascended many times before. And so it's, it's a, this is a, a, a same, you know, not, not our first rodeo, basically. I think they are done that kind of thing. Been there, yeah, done that. Got up in my Cosmo closet, got a bunch of t-shirts and some postcards. Yeah. Um, so this is why some of us felt the need to get on YouTube because we like, oh yeah, like that's that Ishtar, like, oh, I have a little bit of a memory of something that I have to do. Yeah. Um, the other souls um, who are high priority, it means that you are literally at the brink of harvesting. Now, I hate that they use the word harvesting because to me that sounds like a Stephen King novel. 
it's basically graduating. Like you're at that point where you are not able, you have your credits, you can now graduate to fourth density positive. And so you had first priority to come to this planet as it, mm -hmm. as it ascended. It's very, all very, very, very fascinating. With that being said though, I will say, so someone like Nicole, Angie, myself, most of the people watching right now, if you are a wanderer, or if you are highly of the light, you are like um, filet mignon to the darkness. And if they, Moth to the flame. Moth yes. To the flame. And if they can get you to turn negative, it gives them more powerful because that's how powerful you are. All right. So if you get attacked a lot, I'll never forget. So my boyfriend seen me get physically attacked a lot by paranormal stuff, which is really great because he's agreed to witness for me to start some of my affidavits, <laughs> which is wild that I have to have a witness for this kind of stuff. I'm like, this is like X Files meets Murder She Wrote. Like this is fantastic. <laughs> um, but I was standing in the shower. This is like a like a like a few months ago. I was standing. I got out of the shower. Obviously, I was naked. My back was to the doors open. He was standing in the hallway. My back was to him. I was like drawing my face off so he could see him. And he looked up and he said, just this slash mm -hmm. went over my back. And actually, I'm, I might put the picture in, all these slashes I'll, when I'm editing. Um, and then some of them started to bleed. The picture I have, they're not bleeding. And he was like, he started laughing. He was like, I swear to God, ever since I've known you, you are literally like a magnet. This is like, a, this is better than reality TV. Like he was like the shit that happens in this apartment because you're yeah. here. So yeah. if you're someone that's had has had a lot of attacks, I know it sucks. Trust me, I know it sucks. I have a thank you, Nicole. She she talked me off the ledge yesterday because I was like, this is awful. Um, it just means that you're high priority. You're not well. You're not you're not high priority. You're already there, and so they want to feed off of that, and they want to try to piss you off enough to turn you. So um, don't do it. Just hold. That's, that's what I feel like. I was telling you whenever I had that fall. It's been horrible. It's been so hard. Yeah. And that's not the first time, you know, I keep having all these things happen and I, I wake up with the scratches and weird bruising. Like you're like, what, you know, like what in the world? Like nothing happened to me yesterday. Why am I, why do I have a bruise on my stomach? Why, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we know, we know. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and also people that I run into that I know are from the dark attack me you know so yeah it's yeah. funny because when you get to a certain um a, your, a certain frequency uh i know for me i can walk in a place where i'm going to see one person but there's maybe 20 in there this happens time and time again and um the the light beings will just gravitate toward me like they don't know me but they just want to hear what i have to say they're like oh i haven't met you yet and whatever and then the dark are literally like become part of the wallpaper because they're like just yeah. can't get away from me fast enough and i yeah. love making yeah. them uncomfortable because i just have this big light frequency and i'm all about it yeah. and i'm you know and and the more uncomfortable i make you the happier i am and you know what laughter does yeah, they just disappear. So, well, and that's what makes me his, and that yesterday. And I, I have to thank you, Nicole. And so many people. I was having such a rough day yesterday, and so many people like stepped out of the woodwork and like, no, we've been like fighting for you, praying for you. And I'm like, thank you so much because that support really means a lot to me. And I was like, you know, thinking because I know the contract that and there was a contract that was actually taken out on me. I, I, I know about like there's so much I I can't wait to one day write a book about everything, um, mm -hmm. because there's just so much I can't talk about that. Anyway most people in my position that have had that same are dead and i'm not dead i'm still on youtube and i'm still doing it and i'm still out there no matter how many times they spell cast to my channel no matter how much money is stolen from me no matter how many times they come and they wreak havoc in my in my life um i'm still here and i'm still doing it and i'm doing it with sass with with mm -hmm. humor with laughter and that must really piss them off yeah. because i am on the side of god and so yeah. um and i'll never forget when it got really bad god saying like you're not gonna die i'm not gonna let you die and this needs to be exposed and you're strong enough to take it you're yeah. strong enough to take it and so um yeah just be very careful guys and pay attention to that pay attention to the way the way your gut reacts around people you know it's like i was saying with kelly from uh nexium like if you have to walk on eggshells around somebody, that's usually a pretty good sign that they're not the person for you. 
to be in your life, yeah. whether that's a friend, a boss, a boyfriend, whatever, you should be able to be yourself and you should be yeah. able to laugh yeah. and have fun and just, and just enjoy, enjoy this life. And, um, and yeah, the darkness, I will tell you, I think I told you this, Nicole, I didn't tell a lot of people that this happened to me yesterday. And again, I'm really grateful that I have somebody in the house to, um, witness these things. I was taking a bar class yesterday and this is the second time that this has happened where it literally from what my boyfriend says looks like somebody came in and like pushes me like it looks like my body just gets thrown well I was doing this class and I saw the face of the head of the coven flash in my mind and then all of a sudden I felt a hand grab my right leg and something told me in my head fall to the left and so I've pushed my body over to the left and my ankle was swollen all day yesterday. It didn't hurt though. And my boyfriend was like, that literally looks like, looked like somebody came in and grabbed your leg. Uh -huh. And I said this morning, I told, I told this morning, I said, I've been really thinking about it. And whoever told me, maybe it was Magdalene. Somebody told me to fall to the left. And I think that is what stopped my ankle from breaking. Because that's what they were trying to do was break my ankle. I know that. I just know that's what they were trying to do. Because I was telling you, Nicole, I think a part of my the strength has been the exercise. Um, when yeah. Emma did Reiki on me, she said, I keep picking that up that yoga has saved your life. And I was thinking, I was like, yeah. in more ways than one, it's given me physical strength, literal physical strength to yeah. fight this off. And I need it right now. And um, and that's what they've been trying. Try they've tried to do that a couple of times to stop me from actually getting continuing to maintain my physical strength. So jokes on you. Yeah, my ankle. I did another bar class this morning. I didn't do the yoga because I want to make sure I didn't want to put my leg behind my head. I want to make sure my ankle was stable. So I just did bar again and I was fine. So there's no bruising. It's just a little bit swollen. That's it. Jokes on you. And how pathetic is that? I mean, really? How pathetic is that? They're so desperate. They're You're just so really so desperate. Right. so desperate you can't kill me you've tried i know how many times you've tried i've seen it I've, I've seen everything i know who you've contacted i know about the hits so does the military you've stolen all my money but and again and you're you're winning you're still here you're of the light you have divine protection we have mm -hmm. divine protection we have divine guidance and that is the key that yep. is the key. if this is happening to you first of all you're not crazy and second of all there are things you can do to protect yourself and there are things that you can do just being you. You don't need anything from the outside. It's all within. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all within us to be powerful and fight that off because we are of the light. Do you have a sh an, an episode on your channel, Nicole, where you go through all the steps that people can do? So I yeah. will then, I will put that, I'll put Nicole. It's healing, healing disclosures on, on mm -hmm. YouTube and Rumble. All right, I will put that down in the description box, guys, because I want you to go watch that on Give Nicole's channel because we need all those. We need, it's not, a, I mean, Nicole and I were talking about this last night too. It's not about numbers. I don't, I don't really care how many numbers. I, it's not about that. I don't consider, you know, this is not a platform to get famous off of or anything like that. It's not about that. It's basically a war, a battlefield. Yeah, and so yeah. make sure you're subscribing though and you're sharing our videos because that's what gets the information out there that we're all contributing to. So that we, that's the only reason why the mat, the numbers matter. I mean, YouTube could go tomorrow. Yeah. If YouTube right. went tomorrow, I'd be fine. Cause I'm, I'm secure within myself, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, just laugh. That's why I went to bed just kind of like laughing last night. Cause I realized after such a hard day yesterday, I was like, oh my God, I got emotional. I was like, there are so many people out there that are, we're all in each other's corners and we're all like praying for each other and helping each other out. I mean, it gets, it gets me emotional. Yeah. And, and I get more support from from this community a lot of times than than friends that are, you know, right down because, the road. <laughs> because we're when I, I like to out, say actually. I like to say that it's our frequency that calls in our like hearted, our soul family, you know. Yeah. And it's that soul connection that makes you understand on a different level, on a soul level, in your gut, in your heart, that you are on the same path. And you're fighting the same fight. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter what your age, your race. None of that matters. Your soul is literally fighting to win, first of all, your own sovereignty and take your power back. And then you, when you do that, that's going to help lift up people around you that are still on the fence. They don't know what's, you know, they're searching. They don't know what truth is. And then they see you and they're like, wait a minute, what did you do? Like, you're un unaffected by all this bullshit. I'm like, girl, let me tell you the truth. Yeah. Let me give you some truth medicine. It's great. 
Yes. You know, <laughs> the real story is so, so much better. But yes, and Nicole is right. If you've been attacked or if you're feeling you're not alone, um, I mean, I have the signal group on, on, um, on signal, the shadow work support group, but people in that group, that's what I love about that group. It's not, it's not, uh, there's no boundary on only thing you can't do is name call. That's it. You know, or abuse people. That's it. Don't, but you can talk, you can get in that group and you, there are so many incredible people in that group that are just amazing. And you guys can get in there and talk to each other and support each other. And no one's going to call you a name. People are just going to love you and support you and send you prayers. And so if that's something you need to do, even if you're not doing the shadow work, join the support group. We'd love yeah, to that's why I have my Telegram page and healing disclosures on Telegram because I, I felt the need to create a safe space where people that feel and think and have the same journey that I had need a community because mm -hmm. in their own 3D life, they're like on an island. But I want them to know that there's other people that while our journeys are very individual, they're also very synchronized and very similar. And we all tend to go through the same attacks one way shape or form and we come through that with in our community helping each other and we can recognize it easier and we see through the bullshit faster you know whenever you don't when you feel like it's just you against the world that's very daunting but whenever you're you know in a room of 40 or 50 or whatever and you're like all of us combined can we, we definitely win every day oh, we win little yeah. battles every day i mean the fact that they resorted to yesterday trying to break my ankle because nothing else has worked to keep you from exercising to keep me from exercising yeah. because I, I i i figured that out a long time ago because i am very fit for my age and it's been years in the making like 17 years in the making i was like oh this is this, well part of it was my own journey as well but it was to keep me make me very strong to be able to physically mm -hmm. take it and i was like they've tried to kill me. i know how many times they've tried to kill me i know i've been told i know um I, they've done all these things to me they stole all my my money, everything, but I've still been supporting. You are. Fine. Yeah. I'm still here. My bills are still paid. There you are. I had a great breakfast this morning from Panera, like awesome <laughs> avocado toast sandwich with some with some yogurt. Like my nails are still done. You know, like <laughs> it's that song. I'm still standing. <laughs> the LJ, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always one. The, I know people are going to comment, but is it Lizzo, Lizzo? Um, okay. Oh, Lizzo. Uh, I do my hair. My hair yes, that one. I love it. There's a bar class that I'll do where she plays that song. I know people are going to comment about that, whatever. I like the song. It's I like it. my relationship to the song. If you like the Rolling Stones, if you like Led Zeppelin, you get down to that music because it's about <laughs> your relationship. It's your memories. You're not the one doing the various stuff, but music is music. Remember, remember, hello, hello, hello. Darkness can't create anything. Only the light can't. You think the damn devil created music? If you think the devil yeah. created music, you got you are giving that devil far too much credit. God yes. created music. You best believe that our our God loves a good rock concert. So, you yeah. know, enjoy it. Enjoy your life. Enjoy Mardi Gras. Have fun. That's the thing that pisses them off the most. So it yeah. pisses them off the most. Listen, mm -hmm. this coven, I don't watch them. I blocked them all a long time ago. But people will send me pictures. They look like shit right now. They look yeah. like shit. And all of us, we don't. No. <laughs> so... You know, enough said. Enough said. Yeah. Enough said. So, guys, I just want to wish everybody um, I, this again. This is going to be airing on Wednesday. I hope if you celebrated Mardi Gras that you had an incredible, incredible, wonderful, fun, happy. Nicole, have a great Fat Tuesday today with your family. Enjoy, mm -hmm. have fun, laugh. If you didn't celebrate Mardi Gras, but you're like, damn, that sounds. I missed a good time. Go ahead and re-celebrate it. <laughs> I think yeah. you're. Make let your a 40 day celebration of Mardi Gras in your house. Decorate with the beautiful colors of Mardi Gras. And celebrate. There's no there's no need to 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 you, you can you can bend the rules. It's all in love, you know? And and maybe this year for Easter, just appreciate the fact that you as a human being have the ability to ascend. You yeah. have that and that's what the, that's what that's about, is your ascent. It's not about some other dude's ascension, it's about yours. That's what Ishtar Easter is about. It's your ascension. You're yeah. you're the main story. You're the main character of this story. Yeah. The main I um I sent you some pictures. I yeah. wanted to say this before we got off because you know uh, Mardi Gras was canceled 2020, and then they they were allowed to come back 2021, but they didn't have a real parade. And so, um, a business that had always decorated floats that was their main income source for a lot of artists in New Orleans. 
were painting and creating the floats and everything. They, they, they needed, they needed a new spin on what they knew how to do. And so that's how home floats, house floats started. And so people would, any, if you can dream it up, they would create it. And there's a, I send every other information to Bryce. There are these beautiful, there are these beautiful homes that are decorated like a float. And so they have a lot of fairies in the yard and they have, um, banners over the, the second story oh, and cool. yeah. they created Mardi Gras in their own space right. and so then a lot of people whenever the parades were canceled they would just have the house parties and they had their house floats and then they did the same thing because everyone has a costume and everyone has their beads or whatever and mm -hmm. then they just get up on their own balcony and throw them to their own little group and so the the, the moral of that story is don't let people who make decisions based on false information ruin your fun and take your light from you because if that's a celebration exactly. of love and life and family and that's exactly what they did they said it doesn't matter we don't have to have a parade down the street but we're going to celebrate anyway and i really uh, that really resonated with me i want to make sure everyone that, just and, keep that's amazing i will put, i'm going to put all those pictures up i have all of them so you guys that's amazing so go go decorate your house go decorate your living room De just do it all you guys have fun get, do what feels good in your soul and you'll be all right yeah. unless, you, unless you don't have a soul then you're fucked anyway <laughs> and if you have a soul, you're just gonna evaporate anyway so um yeah so uh yeah i i uh you know it's like it's like who says halloween has to be for kids dressing up if you're an adult you want to dress up go dress up have fun why this is your body this is your this is your shakti your body is the shakti of your soul so to express that yeah. anything you want you guys and yeah. magdalene has been bugging me this whole time she keeps telling wanting me to tell people that chocolate isn't bad <laughs> so because i gave up chocolate for lent when i was a child maggie i still eat dark chocolate it's she's okay. like you just go eat you some chocolate she's like enjoy it i think what she keeps saying to alan watts alan watts and i think i said it before this episode as uh, someone asked alan watts what's the point of life you know, he's a philosopher that brought a lot of Eastern philosophy to the West. And he said, the point of life is to be alive. Just yeah. be fucking alive. Go enjoy your chocolate. Yeah. Just don't hurt anyone in the process. Yeah. You know, get your milkshakes if you want a milkshake. Get your French <laughs> fries. Do what you got to do, you know, and, and enjoy it. And when you exercise, that's what I love about exercise. You get to actually feel the power of your body. You get to feel the sweat and the body being alive. That's what I love about it. I don't exercise to punish myself. I exercise to celebrate myself. So, yeah. yeah. Celebrate yourself. Do your hair. Do your nails. Put your makeup on if you want. If you want to, you know. Do you boo? This is your experience, and you know, just because we're we signed up for a war doesn't mean this war can't be fabulous. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, once again, all of the channel information will be down in the description box below. You guys, make sure you're subscribed, and I can't wait to have both Angie and Nicole back on for some more deep dives and deep discussions into this these interesting times we're living in but at the end of the day you guys mm -hmm. go and have fun just make sure you're having fun we love you all happy mardi gras happy mardi gras happy fat tuesday <laughs> happy ash wednesday happy ishtar all that jazz just go. all the happies <laughs> all the happies just laugh and have a grand old time if you're drinking mm -hmm. make sure you get an uber though go enjoy the alcohol alcohol <laughs> can be fun sometimes i like myself a good a good cocktail every now and again get yourself an uber though so all right you guys we love you and we'll talk to you soon bye everybody bye